Hi, my name is Sarah Morris, and I am the host of this fabulous evening. I've never been a host of something like this before. Uh, I'm very excited to be here telling you about our friend Matthew French and to help celebrate his amazing new release, Two Sides, just side one. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Matt, Matthew, Matthew. Matthew French is a Minneapolis-based singer-songwriter and Gibson guitar collector who creates music to connect people through shared stories of love and loss. It's true. The former minister has grown a loyal fan base throughout his engaging performances, wry sense of humor, and warm community-minded spirit. I feel like that sums up uh, who I know Matthew to be um, very succinctly. We are going to get to ask him all kinds of questions so one of my jobs will be um, hanging out with the comments like and hi Beth and Joel hi Matt's dad hello you don't want to see my face anymore so let me let me bring on the guest of honor hey hello how are you doing uh, I am yeah it's been it's been an exciting day and uh, I'm feeling good. I was, I, I feel like I haven't, I've done a lot of these live stream things and you always get nervous a little bit when you're, when you're going to like perform in a venue. Yeah. But I think I was probably more nervous for this than most of the gigs that I've done in the last little while. I get that. You're going to have to sing at my face sometimes and I'm really scary. Oh well, yeah. And everyone else you just have to imagine. We've got a lot of friends here. Did you see your dad's here? I do. Hey, Dad. Love you. Beth and Joel are here. Thank you, Beth and Joel. Ted. Ah, uh, Ted. You're, as I call up these people, I assume you're going to imagine them. Oh, yeah. Imagine giving every one of them a hug. Roberto, hug would, to you. Would you do pre-show hugs or post? Uh, probably one of each. I like it. We know this hey, girl. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Dave Legrid's here as well. Dave, I'll be fine. I will. And Steve and David. All right, we've got a really big crowd here. And so let's get going. Um, you're releasing an album. You released it today. Yes, I am. I know it's confusing, but the confused. album, the album, let's get it all straight. The album is called Straightness. Two Sides. Yeah. But I'm releasing it as side one and side two. That sounds classic. Doesn't it? That sounds, and well laid out, and named appropriately. Well, I got this message, uh, an email somebody sent me today, and they're like, I, I was listening to your songs, and they're beautiful, and they're great, but I was expecting a side two. You will get it. I promise you all that you will get it. It's good. You it leave them wanting more. Oh, That's yeah. That's a thing that people say, right? Well, I'll... T could it, I know you didn't ask the question, but I will tell you a little bit about why I did the the two, the two sides. I felt like it was it was appropriate because of the title of the album, but also I always you know I've I've done uh, a few EPs and one full length album, and I always think of the album process as like this release day you pull the string on the party popper and it just explodes and it's awesome, but the next day you're like cleaning up all the confetti on the on the floor. And with this one, I get to like, you know, I get to kind of bask in side one and wait for side two. So are you cleaning up the confetti in the middle or are you just leaving that confetti on the floor until you do the second one? Uh, I'm going to leave it all this time. Well, no, I'm too anal to <laughs> I'm too anal to not clean up the uh, I was going to say, I so, don't see you yeah. just walking through yeah. confetti for months. No, but um, not gonna I know that. As your friend, I know that the two sides as a title, as a concept, that was out. You had you went into the studio with that. I did, yeah. With that intention. So you had this all, you had like a real solid game plan since way back. I think, do you want to maybe sing us a song? I think because I will. I think that would be a really wonderful idea. All right. This is the uh, this is the first song on the EP. Uh, I'm going to take these headphones out if you don't mind. I'm going to say a lot of things about you. This is the first song on the EP. First song on the EP. It's called "Some Days," 
And uh, I really just kind of wrote this, you know, particularly during the last couple of years, there's just those some days you wake up with energy and you're ready to go. And some days it's just like ugh, the world. And uh, I wanted to, to kind of capture that in the song. So this is some days. Some days you get that feeling. Some days can feel so numb. Take off your hat and wonder where the rabbit's gone. Some days it's all right there. Some days it's all but gone. And you lie awake and wonder what you're here for. From the top of the world. To the valley down below You better believe you are loved Tomorrow there's a brand new light Everything can change Gotta let go of some days Some days the clock moves swiftly Some days the world spins slow Feel like a novelty act In a traveling show Some days you'll be together Some days you'll be alone But time can't break the bond of a love that's strong From the top of the world To the valley down below Better believe you will love Tomorrow there's a brand new life Everything can change Gotta let go of some days Well, the sun will rise You'll open your eyes Breathe again Oh, you'll breathe again Just take it in From the top of the world to the valley down below you better believe you are loved take it wise take it slow it's a long and winding road keep letting go of some day clapping while you put your ears back in. Matthew French, everybody, singing Some Days, track one off of his brand new album, Two Sides, Side One. Uh, I forgot to mention early on that part of what we're doing tonight is doing a question and answer format. So if you have a question, put it in the chat and I will make sure that we post it up here and Matthew will probably answer it because he chose this format, so you kind of have to. Yeah. Also, what I would love is if there's anything that's like struck you about a particular song, like, oh, you know, you just sang some days. And I know Ted in particular, and this really melted my heart that he really caught on to the lyric, you better believe that you are loved. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like the beyond the like some days part of the song. That was the lyric that, yes, yes, Ted, that, that I wanted everybody to really latch on to that it's, you know, some days you just you got to believe in yourself and i want i want everybody to, to know that they're loved 
Look at your loved. Do you see that one? I love you too, Dad. Yeah. Um, I have a question. I get to ask questions first. I have first question rights. Oh, sure. I noticed as you were singing this last song that at the very end you mentioned that it's a winding road. Ah! That's the album title from your, what was that, 2016 release? Was that yes. Was that on purpose? It was. It was. Easter so. Egg? Tell me. Yeah, I, the original lyric there was, it just repeated the lyric, tomorrow there's a brand new light and everything will can change. Thanks, Brianna. Brianne, sorry, I messed that one up. But uh, yeah, the original lyric there was just to repeat the same line. And uh, when we were in the studio, I was like, let me try this other line that I've got here. And it, I don't know that it made sense in my head when I had written it take it wise, take it slow. It's a want, want, long and winding road. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a throwback to Romeo and Juliet where it says, they, that's, they that run fast stumble. There's this line from Romeo and Juliet that always, uh, that always stuck in my head. And so I kind of wanted to incorporate that in the song. So that's the take it wise, take it slow part. And then, you know, I'm always all about throwing it back to something else that I've written. And so to throw that Easter egg in there really really it's made it for move. me it's a pro move i'm just showing you all the people that Thanks, are loving David. this and loving you ah uh, luke love you yeah here's a good one will you be performing side two for us tomorrow night uh, i haven't booked my services so if so i don't know about this yeah i haven't booked sarah's <laughs> services but i my hope is that when side two comes out that we'll be able to gather in a live space um you know gather together in a room and but maybe we do the live stream too because i love this because i'm seeing people from you know from different different places in the country that that might not be able to be in a room with us speaking of the room you're in uh tell us about the room that you're in what i think i feel like you're pulling a little harry potter sort of you're in a, you're not in the room under the stairs but where are you no i am uh I am in in my coat closet, yeah. uh, AKA my studio. So uh, it's the beauty of the internet and cameras and things like that. Uh, my, my vacuum cleaner is like literally a foot and a half away from where my arm is here. And my coats are right there and all of my music gear is up here. And I've got this like fabulous setup of, of lights happening and I'm kind of, you know, I can't move too far without hitting something. So, but I, I love it, and it's great to great to 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 be able to be with everyone via yeah. the World Wide Web. I've heard about that thing. We have our first official question. Are you ready? Oh, great! Yeah. It it comes to us from Preston Gunderson. Uh, Preston says, "What has been the most rewarding moment while recording or writing this album?" Good question. That's Preston. a really, yeah, really great question. Um, the time it, it we'll talk a little bit more about the process, but the the most rewarding part about it for me has been the time in the studio with my friend Chris first to uh, produce the album. Um, you know, we've been friends for since I moved to Minnesota in two thousand and five, and have kind of you know traveled the winding road together. Another throwback, but. Um, <laughs> but we don't often get to spend time together. And so the, the time in the studio where we just got to spend hours together and in between takes or, you know, when we needed a break, just having those conversations about where we've been in life and where we're going. Um, and so to be able to have that time with him, I think is the most rewarding part of this process for me. I love that. I'm sure Preston does too. I'm just gonna speak for Preston because he can't say <laughs> um i'm wondering if you will sing us track two uh, i will i have been asking you to make stickers and or buttons related to the title of this song and i think oh preston does love it he officially loves it yeah good uh so this has still got a heart yeah you want to talk about it at all or should we do it afterwards you know what? I'm going to say that's you. 
Would you like to? Would you like to talk about it? I first? do. This, yeah. Okay. This. Uh, Let's talk about this, it. Yeah, this, this still got a heart. This kind of, you know, obviously, anything and everything that can be polarizing these days is just like it's not polarizing. It's like insanely polarizing. And uh, I'm the guy that's always want, wants everybody to like just be kind to each other. And um, I think it's it's easy to get easy to get down about the state of things, uh, the state of the world. And so I, I wanted to write this song that like um, that there's still heart in the world and there's still awesome people. There's probably awesome people that have different opinions than me. And uh, that we can still value each other and kind of, you know, really get along. So, so that's what that's what this song is about. And uh, I will take the headphones I out. I think and it's play. kind of a bold move song in a way. I'm just gonna say that real quick. Like I think yeah. what you, I think it's a real beautiful statement. It again is very in line with who I know you to be, and 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 yeah. And also, it's so catchy. This is gonna be stuck in everyone's head. I hope so. Hope it gets stuck in hearts too. There you go. Read it on the internet. Heard it on the news. That doesn't mean there's an ounce of truth. Where have you gone? Ability and peace, the lost art of agreeing to disagree. Lately, all I hear about is what we just can't change. Maybe I could start by changing some of my own ways. One thing that I choose to believe about this crazy, beautiful world Still got a heart, CNN said this OAN says that Don't give a damn Unless you give me the facts Lately all I what we just can't change Maybe I could start by changing some of my own ways One thing that I choose to believe About this crazy beautiful world Still got a heart God bless America, land that I love. Open our eyes to see it's not just about us. Cause lately all I hear about is what we just can't change. Maybe I should start by changing some of my own ways One thing that I choose to believe about this crazy beautiful world Still got a heart Still got some heart Still got a heart It's good get to clap while you get your ears back in again. Still right. got some heart. Oh. Yes. Mad French. One of, uh, probably my favorite line on the whole album is one thing that I choose to believe because I mean, do you think that it's, that's what it is? It's a choice? I think, I think it is a choice, yeah. I think it's a choice and it's a it's like a lot of choices that you have to, you have to continually make it. It's not like, eh. yeah, Yeah. It's it's not like something that you'll always wake up believing or you always see with your eyes. You have to make that decision with your heart. 
Can I have it on a sticker? Uh, yes. I, I thought it was a button. I'll yeah. take either. I'll take either. Let's say hi to some friends. Can we? We can. All right. Uh, come on up. There we go. Kristen, thank you. You and Steve got to be watching. Yes. Uh, Ted said earlier that you lead by great example. And uh, thanks, man. I think that's pretty beautiful. Love you, Robin. Ryan, everybody, kids. Doyle's here. Doyle. Love you, man. Love you. <laughs> love you, too. I mean, I want to definitely, see Definitely lots of love. I wanted to see if you'd try. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. We got a question. You ready? Yes. Okay. From David Dennison. Do you draw on your time and experience as a minister at all in your songwriting? Not necessarily in a religious sense, but um, yes, for sure. Um, there was a it, it, my last album release that happened back in 2018. Uh, somebody took this picture of me, and it was like I had my hands outstretched, and I was it was it was almost as if I was taking the offering at church or something like that. Um, but I think certainly, you know, that the time of my life where I was a minister and, and you know, my my faith influences my songs. Um, I just think that, uh, you know, faith doesn't have to be boring. It can it can come out in rock and roll. It can come out in, um, you know, so many various forms that that we put boxes on things. Um, but certainly, um, you know, particularly in the next song, Man in the Yellow Chair, kind of has some faith elements to it. Um, and yeah, so I, I certainly do pull from that. Um, but I'm always hesitant to, uh, there's, a, there's a song by my one of my favorite artists, David Ramirez. And one, uh, there's a line in this song that says, the moment you mention Jesus, they want you to go to hell. And, and so I'm always like careful about being like super preachy about it, but certainly my faith uh, is, is represented in my songs. As a fan, I feel like also the way that you, so I get the privilege of seeing your songwriting often on the songwriter challenge that we both take a part in. And I think that you so beautifully incorporate themes of togetherness and community and being kind to one another and holding on and having faith. I mean, I guess I see that coming on up all the time. I appreciate that. And great question, David Dennison. David Dennison. That's one thing that I, when we, when we kind of were, when we were working on the video to the, to the next song, I guess it will lead into that. We can't um, leave this though. We have to... We can't mm. leave this song yet because of that comment. I right love it. There. I love you, so, Audrey. Yeah. Mm. Janelle, too. Um, but the next, with David, David Dennison made this fantastic music video for the next song that I'm going to sing, Man in the Yellow Chair. And uh, David, I remember when we sat down to talk about it and always asked such great questions and is like, you know, I think he really got the heart of the song across in the video. And it's because of his deep care for deep care for people and deep care for art. So thank you, David Dennison, for that. I think that uh, he did a beautiful job with the video. Let's just take a second. Look at this. Uh, when the show's over, I would love it if everyone would go and watch the video just to keep the party going. I think that's a great idea. Um, one way that you can do that too is you'd go to YouTube and um, you're actually mostly like on YouTube and while you're here on YouTube, you can subscribe because subscribing is the best. Totally the best. It's the yeah. best. And by and the way, people would say smash that like button, mm -hmm. but also subscribe. And by the way, in addition to the amazing video, David Dennison took the photo that became mm -hmm. the artwork to this album, Two Sides. So uh, thank you for that, David. I love you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Man in the Yellow Chair? It's a pretty special song. Yeah. In addition to the video. Yes. Uh, 
we released it on Father's Day of 2021, and um, this is a song that I wrote for my grandfather, uh, who had a yellow table and chairs in his kitchen. And uh, my parents still have that yellow table and chairs in their basement. And that I remember was, it was like the staple of childhood for me, him sitting in that chair and the conversations that you would get to have with him. And, um, you know, this was, this was my song. He was my hero and, uh, you know, kind of one of those people that I would want to be like just the most patient man um, and kind of, you know, very unassuming, but just the most solid person that you would ever meet and I always had the best advice for you. So I wrote the song as a, as a tribute to him. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? There's a table in that kitchen full of memories and wishes. Stories, dreams, and empty old ashtray Through the haze of cigarettes Your voice speaks soft with quiet wisdom Hear it when I go there in my mind Hello, how you doing? Always got time for me and you Sit down for a while Talk about anything Hanging on every word he said All the advice I'll never forget Sometimes I wish that I could go back there One more moment with the man from time to time I wonder Where I'd be if I still had you Am I half the man you thought that I could be Through the haze of my regret Voice speaks soft with quiet wisdom. Hear it when I go there in my mind. Hello, how you doing? Always got time for me and you. Sit down for a while, talk about anything. Hanging on every word he said All the advice I'll never forget Sometimes I wish that I could go back there One day I know I'll find you there Sitting up in heaven you'll be saying hello how you doing I've been right here waiting for you sit down for a while talk about anything I'll hang on every word you say till then Longing for that day God, I just can't wait to see you there One more moment With the man in the yellow jail One more moment Just one more moment
I'm not sure that I will. I don't know that I'll ever. I've I've very rarely play that song live for people because I want people to really be listening in order for me to like honor my grandfather and. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get it fully right, like from the like play the song exactly right and sing it exactly right, but it feels so right every time I play it because because of what it means to me. Yeah, that's all that matters. Yeah, it's a beauty. Uh, can you tell us where that song came from, where it originated? Yes, that song came from the singer songwriter challenge that. Sarah uh, bugged me until I joined a couple of years ago. Uh, <laughs> um, Got a tendency to do that to people. Uh, we get a word prompt every once every week or every two weeks. Um, and sometimes it's a picture prompt. And this was a picture prompt of a gold chair. And that that's one of those songs that just sort of flowed out. I didn't have to spend a ton of time like really thinking about that. And it's different than any other song I think that I've ever written as well, um, which I th so I think that there was it was, it was one of those uh, just magic moments where you were able to to say exactly what you needed to say in a song. Yeah, you got a whole bunch of comments. Are you ready for some 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 more love here? I don't sure. think we knew that Andy Ellis was here. Say hi to Andy. Oh, uh, thanks so much, Andy. Yeah. Love you, brother. Zach's got Zachary Scott's mm. here. Zachary, love you, man. Thanks for sharing the album. Yeah. Uh, Brianne had a beautiful comment. I remember hanging out with grandma and grandpa in the kitchen. Back then, the front door was never locked, and family always stopped by any time. That's mm -hmm. what this song reminds me of. Thank you for taking us all back mm -hmm. to our own memories. Through Thank yours. you so much. Uh, yeah. I love that. I That's love that beautiful. so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he is a hero. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Whitley. I love you. Shelby, uh, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. My dad, uh, Joe, thank you. Love you, brother. Mm -hmm. Doyle, uh, sound good through the internet. You do sound good through the internet, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Beth. I mean, people were really loving this one. Uh, which... Steve, thank you so much. We're just going to keep on showing you all the all the love we have here. Mm -hmm. oh, David, good this thought, is a good one. <laughs> yes. Should we talk about that quickly? Because you did, you sure. went through a name change um, before this album. But like, I mean, I never once not ever called you M. Right. Yeah. I, talk you know, to us. Tell us. Tell us the whole story. Tell us the story, Matthew. When, when I first started writing songs and recording songs, you're just writing songs and recording songs. And, and I'm in the studio and I'm like, well, what should I be called? Should I, you know, naturally, you can just be called your name. But for some reason, we said, let's, someone said, maybe M French. Okay. And that's, that's literally how it went. There was no like, there was no like creative genius behind it. Um, and I think I, uh, maybe this sounds dumb, but I feel like I, I took his on as a persona. Um, not in, not in like a, I was cool or anything like that, but I, it, I took, you know, the last album had the neon sign and I love that album and I'm really happy about that album. Sweet and, love, everybody. Uh, you should still go listen to it a whole bunch of times. Yes, and I, I still have the, I always tell everybody that I still have the neon sign if anybody wants to purchase it from me. Um, but yeah, I sort of took on this persona. And, and after that album, I was, I was like, you know what? I, I think I'm where I'm at as a songwriter. I just want to be me. And um, so I made the revolutionary change to add A-T-T-H-E-W to the M. Um, and it, there's always, there are always, you know, logistical things that go on that. I uh, go along with that. I didn't get Spotify and Apple Music to, to move my stuff over under Matthew French until like a few months back. So um, I'm excited that every, you know, kind of you can get on any of the streaming sites or on my Bandcamp page and, and sort of look back at the, the musical journey that I've been on. 
So it is all, it's all there now as man. It's all there now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just said, I just heard you say that you, you wanted to just be yourself. Do you feel like in this album, like you were able to, to do that in a different way? I wrote down when I was, after I ran to it, because took it on a run, it totally holds up on a run, everybody, that it's like, it's got a denim jacket sound over like the coziest sweater heart. Does that sound? Yeah. yeah. Wearing your no, that's jacket? a good. Yes. <laughs> yes. Never not. Uh, does am that I feel re-release? appropriate? <laughs> Have you thought about re-releasing your past work as Matthew? That does feel appropriate. And to answer David's question, um, I haven't thought about re-releasing it, but it, but it all is under the same, uh, the same banner so you go to matthew french on spotify or apple music now and you find everything from me rather rather than you know there was like the split off profiles before um but i think i think there's a there's something special about the old stuff in a way that it anything you do musically or creatively is a time capsule and um you know there might be a Maybe there'll be a chance down the road that I would want to re-release it, but I think I, 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 you know, we got done recording this album and I immediately reached out to Chris and was like, hey, I got like 15 songs here. Were you ready to just start working on the next album? Um, ready, to, ready to keep pushing forward, I would say. Keep moving forward. Uh, mm-hmm. We are going to... Uh, quick, Steve, Steve wants to know how much for the neon light. Mm-hmm. And then we have another question. I'll work out a deal for you, Steve. <laughs> uh, this is a great uh, question Phil, from Phil. Hi, Matthew. Your songs have a vulnerability that comes across. Does it come naturally or do you have to work at it? Do you have to work at being vulnerable? That's an interesting... I have to work at being vulnerable as a human in interactions with other humans. Yeah. Um, I think there's a... There's a different vulnerability that comes across in my songwriting, and that's, um, you know, I think that's what songwriting is for me. It's a way to say the things that I might not be able to say in like a conversation or in a, you know, in a in a group setting. I'm able to like articulate things in a way that that gets out what's inside me, without. Um, but I don't know that I would ever like, maybe if I've known you for a while, I might be able to get vulnerable in a certain way with you. But um, I think I can do that in a more broad sense with my songs. It's like, you know, you're kind of laying your heart out there. Um, but I think I think even at that, vulnerabilities work. I don't know that anybody is like totally open all the time. And uh, I think it's a something that most of us have to have to work at i just find it uh i find songwriting therapeutic in that way for me to be able to get those things out yeah i love uh, the questions these are like these are great questions yeah we are going to um, move on to the next I've, I've totally been spacing on using this beautiful artwork you made we're going to talk about track four carry on um so on this album most of all the sounds that you hear that I hear, what anyone hears, were created by you and Chris first? Um, How many, like 85% of the sounds, right? Yeah, 85% of the sounds. We had on this particular track, you hear Aaron Fabrini on the pedal steel guitar. Mm -hmm. And? And you hear Annie Fitzgerald on the vocals. What? And here she is! Look at how that (laughs) happened! Friends, (laughs) I don't know this cool streamyard situation. That's how I got here. You sent me a link and said, "Come hang out." Congratulations, friend. Uh, Thank you. Happy for you. This record is so gorgeous, and I've been listening to it. uh, Will and I have all day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So grateful. The the interesting thing about this song. So Annie came in to to sing it in the studio, and uh, you know we're kind of we're, we're. we're tracking it and um we sort of forgot that that i had already sort of laid down some background vocals um just as kind of like a placeholder we always knew that we'd probably have somebody come in and sing it we just kind of wanted to like 
um, have that there so we do what we were looking for. Um, and the track played and I was singing and Annie sang a third part harmony on it at the very end. It's one of the most beautiful moments on the record for me, uh, hearing the, the, the accidental third part harmony. <laughs> Your song, this song is just so beautiful. And I feel like so much that, that this whole record speaks to all of our hearts in this way that, um, I mean, I got teary today listening as I listened all day long because that's just all I do. But um, <laughs> just you took all of the things that we are going through right now collectively and put them in this beautiful gift. And I was like, here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and that this song feels that way for me, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This is actually, it's actually one of one of the older songs uh, that I've, you know, written uh, plenty of years ago. Like, it, this is material probably from the Winding Road days, maybe, or, or shortly thereafter. Um, and I find it really interesting that you write something back then, and and now is the moment that it that you release it, but it takes on a different meaning, yeah. and uh, I think that's that's a, ma a magical thing about songwriting. It sure is. It's it's so it's always it was always relevant, but the 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 poignancy of it now just seems like it's just perfect, perfect timing, and I want to say a thing really quickly before you play another song and I say goodbye that you mentioned something about your grandfather and all of the things that you admire of in him and as your friend you already embody all of those things to me and to everybody that knows you so yay thank you thank you thank you I'm going to encourage everybody when they're done here, if you haven't already listened to the album many, many times, to make sure that you go and listen to the album. Many, many times. Many, many times so that you can enjoy, because Annie's, and I are going to leave the screen, Annie's totally going to be singing in her heart, but you won't hear her, but you will when you go and listen to the album. Yeah. All right. You ready, Matthew? On the road again tonight The stars they shine I can't find the light Worn out Bible On the seat beside Maybe I'll open up those pages So I can do what's right But I've been there before not gonna go there anymore sometimes the right way feels so wrong you just pick yourself up and carry on maybe I'll forgive you Maybe I'll forget Maybe I'll just stay right here And live with those regrets Boy, you learn the lesson, you know That's how the story goes The road is clear in front of you You got no place to go But I've been there before not gonna go there anymore Sometimes the right way feels so wrong You just pick yourself up and carry on I'll forgive you Maybe I'll forget 
maybe I'll just stay right here and live with those regrets. But I've been there before, not gonna go there anymore. Sometimes the right way feels so wrong. You just pick yourself up You just pick yourself up We did this, see, we did this intentional thing with the end of that song where it was, we did an intentional thing with the end of that song where it was, um, supposed to be ambiguous yeah and uh so we caught you on that you caught me just right uh, there i was just like enjoying uh, it and singing it. i was like what what kind of graphic am i going to display next mm -hmm. and then i was like oh it's done uh <laughs> speaking of graphic what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you this lovely ticker tape banner so matthew you don't have any physical cds yet true story True. When uh, when the full album is done, mm -hmm. each side has its own artwork, and then the full album will be printed on disc. It'll have both sides on one disc, and we kind of mesh the two artworks together. So it's like this, you know. I don't know. Uh, it was the the vision that I had in my head, and my my friend Marcus Reland, uh, who I've worked with. And uh, I worked with on Man in the Yellow Chair graphics uh, for that that uh, single cover and this and um, just love the guy and he did he just he nailed it. Until then, what people can do to hear this music is they can go to your website where I know you have everything linked. So go to this website that's streaming at the bottom. Mm -hmm. That way you can find your favorite music streamer or Bandcamp, which where you can download it, which is awesome. Um, and that's how you can get the tunes in your head over and over again until you can finally hold that disc. You said the disc and the two sides, but just to be clear, when someone has a CD, if they tried to flip it over and play it, that would not happen. Right. Yeah, you, okay. don't, want to do, you don't want to do that. You'll probably ruin your disc. And then definitely hit the. Say, oh, you got to get it in vinyl. I will beg for YouTube subscribers as well. So, always trying to get that count up and do more video stuff. So, if you hit the subscribe button on YouTube there, that'd be awesome. Yeah, the show is free, which is amazing that you're doing that for no dollars. But hitting the subscribe button is like gold. It's like lots of crypto love. I might, I might not be NFTs. making. It's NFTs. I might not be making dollars, but it sure makes sense to me. There you go. Had, had, to, had to get one in, guys. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see what we got over here on the questions. Oh, Maddie Rocks is here. Hey. Uh, Matthew. Thanks, Matt. Josh. Love you, man. Love you, Maddie. Uh, we got lots of applause. <laughs> applause. Here you go. Brianne asked it. Will there be vinyl? Will there be vinyl? People. I would love for there to be vinyl, but I hadn't really thought it through yet. How did you not think it through with a two-sided album? What? Well, I want vinyl. <laughs> I want vinyl, but there's the monetary investment. It is expensive. It's yes. expensive. I totally get that. We're going to talk a little bit about... Um, we've only got one more song left and just a few more minutes. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, if you're fine with this... You don't have a lot of choice because I'm just telling you we're doing it. Uh, we're going to talk about the person you made the bulk of this album with. Yeah. Uh, <gasps> oh, there yeah, he is. That's, that's him. We we had all of these. Uh, Chris is a guitar guy like me. Uh, Christopher this is a First. Christopher First, yes. Studio65recording.com. Mm -hmm. um, but Chris is a guitar guy like me, so we just really geeked it out in the studio with all the different guitars. So we, a lot of vintage stuff that we played on the record and, and just, yeah, I mean, there would be, one. this is a baritone guitar that appears on side two. 
Uh, oh, it's telling the future. 1956, Gibson J50 is just off screen. Mm. Uh, Dan Electro 12 string. Uh, nineteen forty nine Gibson ES one seventy five. Uh, how long have you and Chris been friends? Uh, we have been friends since um, two thousand five when I moved to Minneapolis. And you all started so. I feel like you started talking about this album. Yeah, it was a it was a while back. I'm trying to I'm we're we're hoping he can join us here. Is he trying? Yes, he is trying. No man, you if you can join. Hang yeah, on just a second. There. We're you gonna we're gonna see if totally we can get him on. on the line here. Oh my gosh. I wish it's kind of like a like if I could Casey case him it or something, you know, like it feels like that kind of thing. Like, are they on the line? But I can tell he's not on the line. But when you start, okay, so here's my question. When you started to make the album, did you know from the get-go that it was just gonna be the two of you? Or was that somewhat a result of like where the world went? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we, we didn't necessarily set out to do it that way. Um, but it was, you know, there were pandemic considerations and um, other considerations in the city of Minneapolis that were happening at the time, um, where oftentimes we just have to get together and like, you know, mad scientist stuff. And there would be times where we would, um, you know, we'd work a full day and like think we had something and come back the next day and go, oh, that's terrible. Um, so uh, by nature, it was, um, you know, it it was that way because of the way the world was, but also it turned out to be a valuable thing where we were able to take our time and really be patient about it. That's awesome. Because you started recording in May of 2020, uh, June of 2020? Uh, I think it was like February of 2020. Oh, so like, yeah. Pre-COVID. And then, yeah. and then COVID happened. And um, I, I think it's super interesting how much of the album is just two people no part of it sounds you know like it's such a full like i said it's a denim jacket it's a denim jacket record like it's mm -hmm. full um but the thought that it was just the two of you like having you know chris is a wizard you know type, like right? yeah he's a wizard played the drums on the record and a lot of the bass parts and guitar parts just a just a crazy talented human being that's wonderful all right. Um, did you? I have right here that you're gonna say thank you. Oh, but you know what we're gonna do before you say thank you? What? Let's do a cheers. Can okay. You do that? Yes. Everyone else at home, I'm gonna put the comments for a second. I don't see anyone talking about it, but I know they are. Cheers to Matthew French and your beautiful new release, Two Sides. Cheers. And a round of applause. Yeah, I have it written down that you're going to say thank you to people right now. Do you have anyone else to say thank you? You thanked Chris. Yep. I want to say thank you to um, Ellen Stanley at EFS Publicity, um, yeah. who's really helping me get the word out about the album. Um, she's awesome. Mother Banjo is her is her musical name. Um, and she's she's wonderful uh, as a musician, but she's also also awesome as a publicist. So... Um, thank you, Ellen, so much for, for your hard work and for all of you for being here and, and being, being thoughtful with the questions and, um, William, love you, my friend, and, uh, just being wonderful human beings. So thank you. I hope that we can do this again, um, for side two. And do you have any, any, like, if people want to stay abreast of the of the situation when side two is coming, what's the single best way to yeah. for them to find out? What's your? I'm I'm on all of the social medias at M French Music at the at sign M French Music. Um, that's a great way. Uh, but you can sign up for my email list on my website M French Music. Sarah's been scrolling it across the screen here. Um, 
if you if you stay on the page for like 10 seconds you'll you'll get one of those pop-ups that everybody hates um, but you will like this one and it'll be the best pop-up ever yeah it's the best pop-up all right you know what the sec the second best pop-up is what that oh just popped right up <laughs> now that is a pop-up <laughs> i'm a little dark sorry you guys it's all right chris welcome how you two doing hey uh, I did what I, I was worried about. I was out working on something and totally forgot. <laughs> that's the beautiful Classic. that's a beautiful thing about it. I mean, we had times like that in the studio where it was like, you know, you're working away on something and yeah. hours have passed by and um, conversations for hours with this guy in the studio about the world and life yeah. and uh, just crazy, wonderful times. I remember Matt would bring in like all my favorite <laughs> snack foods or snack foods I've never heard of. We'd have the best, craziest chips ever. Yeah, that's We'd my, that's, uh, I think chips are one of my love languages where like I want to bring <laughs> like all of the new snacks to the people that I love because I want them to love them too. And I want to enjoy them with, with the, with the people. It works so good. Sorry okay. about the reflection in my glasses. I like the reflection. It means I see your true colors. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm sitting in my living room in the dark. So I think my favorite part, Matt loves vintage guitars and he'll <laughs> always bring in these crazy vintage guitars that I've always wanted to try. We were looking at some of these pictures here. You see? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like look at your that. concentration phase, too. You're really rocking it. You know that there's pretty much a joke going on there at some point. I don't think that was a serious moment. <laughs> it sounds like between chips and, like, cool guitars, like, it was mostly play as well as work. I mean, like, work disguised as play. Yeah. Like... Well, we get to was... hang out as friends. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he that didn't made everything better. Yeah, he didn't hear what I said earlier, and he said the exact same thing. That was my favorite part of the album. They asked me what my favorite part of the album was, and I said, getting to hang out with you. Yeah. The music was just like something that happened along with that. Mm. Yeah. I Sarah, think you were there for a day. I was there for a day. It was super fun, and I can't remember if I got what? chips, but... Um, <laughs> and I wasn't asked to touch any of the guitars, but I do think, like... That sense of friendship and heart, I mean, it just comes through in the songs. It comes through as a, li yeah. as a listener. It move, It's part of what um, moves everybody who, who hears the music. So kudos yeah. to both of you. If I had any wine left in my glass, I would cheers you both right now. But also my water glass is empty, so, and I have no chips. <laughs> so I'm just going to go back to the <laughs> big applause. Round of applause. Thanks so much, Chris, man. I love you. I love it. Thank yeah, you I love for you guys coming. Too. Yeah, sorry I'm late. You. You're all good. Right on time. Right on time. Right on time. Because now Matt's going to sing uh, the last song. Yeah? The this title is two, track. This is Two Sides. And here we go. Okay. Stuck here in the middle Riding on that fence Caught in between what was mm -hmm. and what might have been can't change the past. So we just try to make make it last. I think it's time. I think it's time to move on There are two sides to every story Two sides to every coin Two sides to every page You gotta choose which side you're on If 
fighting with the sadness Running from ourselves Caught in between who we were So fast, oh, so fast. I think it's time, I think it's time to move on. Every two sides to every story, two sides to every coin. Sides to every page, you gotta choose which side you're on. Never to Sides to every story, every two sides to every coin. All oh, every two sides to every page. You gotta choose which side. Chris, I had to bring you back so we could applaud him together. I don't. I, don't I like it. Big one though. Look at there we go. There <laughs> we go. That's better. That's better. Uh, Matthew, let's just. Some people are thanking you. Oh my gosh! Thank you guys so much, Matthew. Thank you so much for being a part of this. This is like. Oh, thank you so much, Mayor. I love you. Uh, this is like. This is cool. We get to gather people from wherever they're at, rather than. We're doing it in a in a safe manner right now. And everyone can Love wear you, soft pants. Yeah. Nobody has to wear. No one has That's to put right. button pants on. <laughs> it could be dusty. It doesn't matter. That's uh, right. <laughs> thank you so much, Chris. Hey, you guys are awesome. Yay! Uh, thank gotta, you. Got Beth some and more Joel. love that we got to take. Um, Matthew, what <laughs> what can you leave us with? To what 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 do you want to close out with? A song. Song, or a just message, like a, a word. Yeah, no, um, yeah, uh, I didn't, I, it's to totally off the cuff. Thank you so much, Wendy and Graham. Love you, man. Um, what do I want to leave you with? Yeah, I mean, I think I was reading something in a book last night and it talked about how uh, the writer talked, it was a book about songwriting and it, and it talked about how uh, sometimes you don't realize the meaning of your songs until years later. Um, and, I, and this album has been that for me. Some of them were like, it was like, I knew what I was saying when I wrote it and we recorded it and I said what I wanted to say. Um, and there, there are other songs like Carry On and Two Sides that I wrote at a time in my life where things weren't that great. I, I didn't think they were, they just weren't that great for me. Um, but they've taken on different meaning. And sometimes those things, the, the songs take on different meaning because of you, um, because of the way that you respond to them, because of, because of what you tell me that it means to you or, um, and I think that's the magic of music. And I, more than anything, just want to be a part of that, um, be a part of that with you. Uh, my other songwriting friends, Chris, Sarah, Annie, several of you that are, that are watching, um, I'm just grateful to be able to make my little small deposit into our big magical community of songwriting. 
Um, and I thank, thank my parents. I, I thanked them at my last release show, but I thank my parents for, uh, yes, show in Grand Rapids. I'd love that. <laughs> um, I thank my parents for buying me my first red Squire, Fender Stratocaster Squire. I wish I still had the thing at this point just for posterity's sake. Um, but I would never play it because I'm a, I'm a, uh, vintage guitar snob now. Um, <laughs> But uh, thank you all for uh, for being here, for all of your fantastic questions, for just being wonderful human beings. And uh, I love you. Sarah, thank you so much for hosting this night. I knew that you would. Do thank you Sarah, for Sarah hosts a Sarah hosts a program. Uh, thank you so much, Andy. Um, Sarah hosts a program every Friday at noon on her YouTube channel, Sarah. Morris Music. So just go to go to YouTube and type in Sarah Morris Music. She hosts a show called Hey, I Miss You. It happens at noon every Friday. Um, brings in a guest from, you know, wherever they are in the country or in the world and uh, just kind of talks about their songs and highlights different artists. I knew you would make a good host, mm -hmm. um, but you've you've also been the biggest uh, the biggest cheerleader, too. So thank you for that. Um, and so Three cheers for us all. Two sides. Everybody, again, I'm going to tell you that your job now is to go to Matt French Music, mfrenchmusic.com to subscribe to the YouTube channel that you're already on and uh, get ready for side two because it will be out. Thank you. Love so y'all. <laughs>